Hello, hello. Welcome once again to Guru Grit. And today we're opening another series of book summaries. So last summer I did the first book ever by Abraham Hicks and they actually have a part two. So it's A New Beginning 2. So this one is going to be a lot quicker than the first one. I did a whole um, TikTok series on it as well and on YouTube because a lot of the material is quite repetitive and I just don't see the need to go into that like 40,000 times. We've all heard the same messages. Chances are if you're watching this you've probably heard and listened to a lot of Abraham Hicks and other such teachers so let's just get right into it. Today's topic I actually had to um, jump around a little bit to start here because it makes me laugh. I was consider I was thinking about the environment early in the week and when I made that Saturn video and that dating video, I thought, I really want to do this video first. But something just told me to hold off. And lucky that it did, because as of yesterday, speaking of the environment and environmental well-being, we've had, uh, you know, somebody posted online how many emissions are produced by celebrities who are flying with their private planes and all of that. And I find that very amusing. So um, actually what I wanted to talk about was the environment. And there's a blurb from the second to end of the book about this, so I find this very fascinating. So thank you once again for being here. You can find more information below. And without further ado, let's just uh, get into it. And with the previous videos, I'm trying to go with the flow more with life, so if anything happens to interrupt it, we'll just keep it rolling. We just, we don't care about perfection anymore. So um, here's what I find very amusing. Okay, so we know that whatever you're thinking you're energizing, you're empowering that thing. And never has there been a time, certainly my lifetime, that we've been more sort of um, polarized, okay? Everyone has something to disagree about with other people and uh, find it so hard to find people that are on common ground with them on some level, you know? And like strangers are scared to tell each other what they think about any specific thing. And we've sort of cultivated this massive culture of just throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So it doesn't matter if someone's a good person, if they, um, you know, say something you disagree with about one thing, let's say like the environment or whatever, it's just shut it down, you know, we've just, we've just done away with human decency in, in a large degree. So I find this very funny because I'm such a person, okay? So from childhood, I've been very sympathetic towards the environment, the world around me. I say this often, I said it in a previous video, I don't want to just live on the planet. I don't want to live in the world. I want to live with the world. I care about my environment. I care about my animal friends. I care about nature. And that's pretty much the first thing I've ever really given a lot of care and cause towards, and I'm still that way. All my pets have been runs that were adopted and needed extensive medical attention, etc., etc. Okay, I care about these things. But not to the degree that I'm distressed like fraught with anxiety and can't sleep at night. That's crazy to me. If you observe nature, you actually understand everything has a defense mechanism, even plants. Okay, they produce tiny trace amounts of what would be like a toxin to something and tries to eat it. You know, um, everybody should listen to videos by the late Dr. Andreas Moritz that explains this phenomenon. So everything in the world has a means of ensuring its own survival. Why human beings think they are simultaneously on top of the food chain and so dominant over everything else is very arrogant to me. I think it undermines the intelligence that created us. But I thought this even before people were hysterical about the environment. You know, remember when I was growing up, we had acid rain, then the ozone layer, then global warming, and now it's just called change which is true because the earth is alive, it's always going to change. Now, I don't believe personally, which gets out of the way because people are gonna write things and message me, <laughs> mouthfuls of abuse. For those who take time to do that, I'm not like, you're free to express yourself, it's whatever, but it really has no effect on me. <laughs> I'm not like 18, I'm a grown formed human being, I just think you're wasting your time, but that's totally up to you. Um, so I don't really care, but thanks anyways. Um, and yeah, I just think like, there's nothing you could do to overpower something that's so vast and that has so much alignment going through it that it could fend for itself, you know? Now, I'm not saying you buy like a gas guzzler and litter. That was what spawned this whole thing. I was in the woods and I was like, I don't get why people litter. I don't get it. It's so rude, you know? Like, I just hate it. Um, I, I care for the environment. I do what I need to do within my capacity to care for it, right? But I'm one human being, and I'm at the bottom of the food chain as far as like all the things that have influence in the world. So in any case, 
this study comes out showing all these celebrities that fly like seven minutes in a private jet, 12 minutes, 17 minutes, whatever. This isn't what bothers me. What bothers me is hypocrisy, okay? If you're gonna do something, be good at it. If you're gonna be a liar, like don't get caught. <laughs> if you're gonna be like a fake, a falsely ethical individual, well, be ethical about certain things and not others if it's really not your realm. You know, if you're gonna take like a private jet to go to the Maldives and talk about climate change, maybe not a good move. Maybe not a good move. You should like take a commercial airline or you know, like walk or swim for all I care. But don't dictate to other people what they must do when you don't do that thing. Um, I think it's my own ego because I just find it, uh, you must think I'm really, really stupid and that like annoys me, you know, so that's me. But I don't know how everybody else feels, but I wanted to take this blurb out of this Abraham Hicks book. Um, I don't know that they've mentioned anything about the environment in recent years, but somebody asks a very good question. So the back of the book, and we'll get to my favorite chapter. I want to open with chapter three, self-appreciation. Basically, if everybody loved themselves, we would know peace and harmony in the world with everyone and everything. Obvious, of course, but this person asks, can humans destroy this planet? Okay, page 234 if you have this book. We should do like a book club and go along with these things. But I know these books are sometimes hard to come by. That's why I do this. So you can all have access to this amazing information. And if you want to know more, I do sell my vintage esoteric um, books. So um, yeah, they're on my Etsy still. I'll, I'll upload more. But thank you to everyone who's bought some. I really want to keep this information in circulation as much as possible. This wonderful person asks, question. When you were talking earlier about certain things not being our job and not being responsible for the world and also how if you put more intention on something you create more of it right so if we talk about the doom and gloom of something we're actually creating that doom and gloom isn't that fascinating what flashed to me was the problem with the environment and the hole in the ozone layer so this tells you this book was published in the early 90s that's what i was just saying when i was in my school days is it not our responsibility to try and educate people to changing things so that we don't destroy our planet and our environment? Abraham answers, you cannot destroy your planet. Oh, isn't that lovely? It's almost as though the thing that made us strategically placed us somewhere where this would make sense, that we could not destroy our own source of life, right? That makes perfect sense. If people are going to talk about pollution and the harm to wildlife, um, resource shortages. I hope they understand the blame doesn't lie with the 99% of people who just try, try to live and exist in the world and make the most of their lives like us. It's people who control factories, who control governments, who control resources, you know what I'm saying? But you know, because you watch Guru Grit, you know what's up. You cannot, no matter how hard you try. Many who are more destructive than you have come before. From this level of creative endeavor, you do not have the ability, nor will you ever, to destroy your planet. What do you think about that? And so this cunning question asker pulls a Monica and just goes <laughs> full blast and says, what about 20 hydrogen bombs going off? Abraham says, oh, we're not saying you can't mess things up a bit, but you cannot destroy the planet. Don't worry about it, okay? So Earth is continually growing new skin. Your Earth itself, is an entity seeking its own balance. You are like fleas on the back of a dog and there aren't enough of you to cause that dog very much trouble. This is an analogy that they've used before. They said, you're like fleas in the back of the dog. The earth can just shake you off any point in time that it wants, so why worry, okay? So another thing they say is the majority of those, and this is uh, gonna get me, I'm a big, big, uh, big fan of South Park. I remember when it first came out and I still watch it to this day. And one thing that they've like gone, um, they said one of the jokes didn't age well was man bear pig with Al Gore. <laughs> and I thought that was like really amusing and I love, but also I fell into this panic hole for like many years, right? So you have to understand like coming out of it and regaining my peace is something I want to share with others. I want you to know there's just nothing to worry about truly. So they said the majority of those who speak out wanting to improve the ecology, let us say, or the earth environment do so. And we are going to be very bold here. They do so to support their own intentions. And they include you, they sweep you up in their intentions because that is the way that they are able to gain access to money. Oh, who would say? Who would say? That's crazy, right? I'm at, so my friend is huge into the environment. She has like a prestigious master's and it's like her life's work and it's wonderful. 
that one thing we agree on is like, remember when everybody was demonizing plastic straws and then, um, you know, recently we've had to wear masks and things and that's done like a lot of damage to the environment, but nobody would dare speak of that, you know? And then like, let's say the plastic straws thing. Uh, people came up with metal straws, which I thought was fine, but in my head, cause like I'm clearly a lunatic and very naive, like Disney character, I thought, oh, if we're trying to um, regulate how much we garbage we produce, I just thought like only X amount of companies would be able to make such straws to reduce waste. But no, anybody can produce anything and call it sustainable. But all we do now is consume that and then dispose of it and buy something else that's sustainable. So it's just like you're on this wheel and you can't get off um, and nothing really makes a lot of sense. So the best thing you can do, a la Abraham, is to just enjoy your life you know, treat everything around you with kindness and respect. You know, if you're going to eat meat, you can get some at a, from a local farm, buy good quality organic um, animal products, okay? Uh, you don't have to purchase mass-produced dairy and, and meat products, animal products, etc. okay? There's things you can do because you care. You can garden, you can take care of animals, you can just be like considerate. But it's basically, as they would say, the thought that you offer has the most impact. So being like, positive about things and not being like a faux activist like I have nothing against rich famous people I just feel like I don't know is is there something about like that money hitting your bank account suddenly having some status does it like just compel you to to will your influence and ethos on others it's like a little bit juvenile and I like I really hope that it stops because I don't I don't remember ever Growing up, like hearing my friends say like, I wonder what the Spice Girls think about this or that or what this athlete thinks about politics or that. And now these celebrities are always like telling you your place when they do something completely different. And that's all I'm saying. It's like, just, just don't say anything at all. I would respect you more if you just knew your place in the world and lived from that place in the world like I do, you know? I don't care what you do, but don't dictate that th something is right and something is wrong in this manner and then do the complete opposite. Well, should we just get like a long bench of people who believe this stuff and just have like a chump, chump seating station? You know, we should just get like foam fingers and like this glassy eye in our, in our glassy eyes, glassy look in our eyeballs and just have like a stamp. So it'd be like chump one, chump two, chump three, and just line up all the chumps who like fell for it and like believed it, you know? And I'm like, they don't believe us, which leads me to believe if people, with that much power and resource are not panicking about something, but we are, they must know something, right? They must They must be in the know. Maybe they're callous, maybe they're desensitized, I don't know. But I'm guessing there's power in numbers. So clearly if they're not worried, I'm not sure why I should sacrifice my standard of living, which I work very, very hard to afford. And I, I can assure you <laughs> to date is not super glamorous <laughs> at all. It's not fabulous, um, but it's, it's my life. You know, why should I suffer? So you can take your 17 minute jet ride or 25 minutes or whatever out of your sheer convenience. Well, can't I do something out of my convenience? Like drink from a straw that doesn't disintegrate in the drink itself. I'm just like drinking paper. That can't be good for health. There's no long-term study on that, but you know. Anyways, long story short, Abraham says, so you're saying that we put our head in the sand, but here's the point. They say you do not live in like one world. You live in a world with multiple realities and timelines. So therefore, if you are in a world where people are panicking, you're actually going to fall under the influence of that discussion and you're going to see evidence of that issue. If you're in a world where you're confident and you know that you live in a place that can support and sustain life, you know, grow tomatoes, grow your cucumbers, got, what do I have here? Lots of herbs, some fruit, okay? And you trust in that, it trusts in you and you live in harmony with nature, you live in harmony with the world and with, dare I say it, other people, would not be the dream? And then if you don't, if you live in the idea of discordance, that something's out to get you, that these people are evil, that these people are bad, that this thing is good, this thing is wrong, but you're obsessed about it, you kind of like attract it to yourself. So just calmly and pleasantly go through life. And so if there's anyone who's ever wanted to know what you can actually do to the planet, the answer is not a whole lot. And in their first book, I left out this part because it was a bit like doom and gloom, but they prophesy an event that's meant to be quite, you know, catastrophic, a uh, cataclysm of sorts. And they said, you are creators, okay? You are creators, spirit flows through you, do you understand? And you can have anything, do anything, be anything, except this one thing. They said, be 
one thing that's out of your creative control is what the earth itself does because it's your host effectively so this whenever the earth kind of shakes itself loose um, you know I imagine like a dog shaking as they described us as fleas that's its will you have yours but anytime the earth wants to do something you have to respect it <laughs> because you live on it um, and it's completely free to do so so why between now and then why worry why panic just enjoy your life, you know? And I was listening to remote viewer, a very, very prominent remote viewer, do an interview this morning, and they said everything they've ever seen or their teacher has seen has come true, but the timeline is like greasy and slippery because it depends on our vibration. So if you get really happy, then in your lifetime, you can heal the world. Literally, it's in the book. You heal the environment with the power of your good intention, of your goodwill to everything around you. So go have your iced coffee, get your nails done, go to the gym, do what makes you happy, drive there if you want to, take the bus if you want to, walk if you want to, I don't care, okay? The point is that the more we are able to acquiesce, that's the word that they would use, acquiesce to living with each other and this consciousness, the better everything rises, okay? What do they say? Rising tide raises all ships. So be the first. So go forth, worry not, live your life, and ignore hypocrites. They, they feed on your anger. I promise you this. So thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I love you all. Bye-bye.